name is uh, Alan Muscovitz. I, you may have remembered me as Big Al on the Dick Purton Show. Any Purton listeners here? Good, because I am starving for attention. But it, it is certainly not about me today. Can you hear me in the back okay? Good. Uh, it is certainly not about me. It's the 70th anniversary of uh, VE Day, the victory in Europe. And we have got quite the weather, thank God, knock on wood, so far holding up because we're going to let that fly over at about 6.15. We have a very special guest coming up real soon, Al Brooks Patterson. The Oakland County Executive is going to address you, and we've got just incredible speakers uh, from the French Resistance are going to speak, and we've got the orchestra band from the uh, symphony band from Berkeley. Um, and have they, I don't know if they've all arrived yet. I heard some motorcyclists, but for the Patriot Guard riders, the American Legion Post 108 riders, and the American Legion Post 253 riders. Let's hear it for them. Are you out there? I see their motorcycles out there. We have contests going on today. We've got. Uh, we want you to be part of a photo contest that you can upload to our Facebook page. And uh, we're gonna, over the next two weeks, we're going to have the votes taken and. Uh, Take a photo with uh, with our statues. Take a photo with a veteran. Take a, sta a picture with uh, one of the jeeps that are on display, the World War II jeep that's on display. And you can learn a lot about all oh, about doing this. If how many smartphone users are there here? All right, we got a few. How many dumb phone users are here? Yeah, okay. Well, uh, if you text the word mail M A I L to nine ten eleven simple as that. The word mail, M-A-I-L, to 91011. This will officially register you and you will get up to the minute reports on what's going on right here today. That'll keep you informed. Then, I know I'm giving you a lot of information, but I'll be repeating it. If you text VET Day 70, or excuse me, not VET, VE Day 70, VE Day 70 to 91011, You'll learn about all of today's activities, our schedules, how the contests are run, everything you need to know about what's going on today. If you don't want to use your phone, then just walk over to our information center tent, we'll call it our, uh, I forgot what we're calling it, our main command center, and you can buy fabulous looking t-shirts, you can get the 70th VE Day pins that you can purchase. Uh, you can find out more about what the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial is all about. I think that's the first time I mentioned why we're here. But I'm working for free, so I'm going to forget something. I'm also a proud member of the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial. You are sitting on the land that Royal Oak has designated for this memorial. It is going to be grand. I'm not going to tell you all the details. Other smarter folks, like our president and board vice president, are going to be discussing those things with you today in brief form. But you're going to leave informed and, I think, inspired. So we encourage you to like us on Facebook. And if you're having trouble, if you need something, if you need a restroom, it's over there. If you need some food, we've got some grand people here serving us today that we will talk about later. And uh, also, seek out a board member that's wearing a gray shirt or has a badge on or go to the information center. You are our guest. We want to help you learn more about the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial. And uh, we're just thrilled, thrilled that we have such a great turnout this early. And then, of course, boy, at 6 o'clock around there, we're going to unfurl a 60-foot by 30-foot flag. And then about 6.15, God willing, that B-17 bomber Yankee lady is going to fly over this park, take a picture of that flag and all of us. So if you don't want your picture taken, don't look at the plane. And of course, if you want to go to our website right now on your phone, it's Michigan WW the number two memorial.org. So uh, we're just thrilled to have you. We're thrilled to have our veterans from World War II. We're thrilled to have our veterans who are currently serving and who have served. We're just so happy you're here. I will make one comment because some folks might be wondering. Uh, on a sad note, we recently lost a Navy SEAL from Michigan that you might be aware of. Uh, on April 26, in a training accident, Brett Allen Marhu, Special Warfare Operator, First Class Navy SEAL, lost his life in a training program, sadly. Normally, we would have the flag at half-mast, so if some of you veterans are wondering about that, it's a technical problem. 
with the flag pole. So, but please know that we want to respect that and we will mention it again later. But we will have his thoughts and our prayers for his family and we will remember him always for his courage. I lost my brother Frank in the Battle of Iwo Jima. He served on four combat tours in Vietnam, in Iraq, in Afghanistan. There's a life that was lost behind that pen. I put it on for my wife. For my husband. My brother. My dad. My son. We wear it because we honor those that we lost. To learn more about the stories behind the Gold Star Pins, visit goldstarpins.org. Introducing a new day of the week, someday. Now, everything you were going to do someday is on the calendar. Want to retire someday? You'll really want this. A My Social Security account at socialsecurity.gov. You can estimate your future benefits and manage current benefits online. Millions of people have a My Social Security account. Get yours today, because someday is here at socialsecurity.gov. Every time you purchase a fishing license or register your boat, you're helping to preserve our nation's coastlines, lakes, rivers, and streams. Memories for generations to come. Learn how your participation in boating and fishing can help the environment at takemefishing.org slash conservation. your attention right now we have a very very special guest who we are just so thrilled to have with us today we met with this gentleman several days ago and his team and the outpouring of emotion and cooperation could not have been greater the interest in our the Michigan World War II legacy memorial uh, means a great deal to him and he expressed it in that meeting and we could not have asked for a, a better meeting and so it is my pleasure to introduce to you right now your Oakland County Executive, the one and only, Al Brooks Patterson. Let's hear it for Brooks. Thank you, Al, and uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real pleasure uh, to be here. I mean that sincerely. Uh, it's an honor to be with so many veterans who remember this day in history. Uh, I'm a veteran. I served my two years, 50 years ago, seems like. Um, but I'm not here to take a bow, I'm here to recognize what uh, the greatest generation did 70 years ago and uh, winning this long protracted war which changed history. Uh, I remember, uh, I may not look that old, um, but uh, I do remember the end of World War II. I uh, came in the house and I said to my father, Dad, why is everybody honking their horn? The whole neighborhood was honking their horn. And he said, World War II is over. And I, I understood a little bit about what he meant because I've been listening to the war accounts, believe it or not, uh, on the radio. I'd come home for lunch. I was within walking distance to school. I'd come home and I'd listen to Wendy Warren in the news. I, I can't believe I remember that name. And she would give updates on the war. And the concept of war to a, to a six-year-old, you know, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty vague what it all means. But I remember the outpouring of tears people crying and, and, and hugging each other, total strangers. My dad and my, I have a twin brother then, my sister and mom, we got in a car and we had the biggest flag on the block. And so we got it out the car window and we started driving. I grew up in Rosedale Park in Detroit. And we started driving down Glastonbury and a couple of cars fell in behind us and a couple of more. And before we finished, you couldn't see the end. We had you know, two or three hundred cars for sure just weaving in and out of the neighborhoods, honking horns, and so that was my, my, my memory of the end of World War II. And of course, we've had some unfortunate uh, conflicts since that didn't end with such a uh, victory as we, as you guys and our fathers uh, did before us. When World War II was ended, it was a clean sweep, it was unconditional surrender, and that's the way you ought to fight a war. Uh, but I, I'm here to celebrate with you and, 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 and to really, I think you all know what might happen here in a couple of years with Al's leadership, Al Muscovitz and, and his team. They're going to put in a park 
that memorializes the, the servicemen and women, Rosie the Riveter, uh, from uh, World War II. They don't get enough recognition for what they did for this country 70 years ago uh, when it ended on this day. Actually, yes, it may be technical. Uh, and I think what you undertake now Al, and your team to build a park here in memory of the, uh, the greatest generation, the World War II vets, is an incredible uh, tribute, long overdue. And when Al came to see me, he said, this is what we're planning on doing. I said, Al, what can I do to help? I think it's a great idea. I want it. I want to have the tribute. Well, I don't care if it's in Macomb, Wayne, uh, Oakland. I think the tribute is long overdue. Now, the fact that it's in Oakland, it's a little more of a bonus for me, but I appreciate that. But anyway, I have to go downtown and, and uh, address some people on a totally another subject. But when Al said you're getting together today to begin the, the celebration of uh, VE Day, I said, do you want to stop by? And I said, absolutely. So I'm going to come by and say to all of you, uh, thank you for a job well done over the years. Thank you for keeping the spirit alive. I see so many hats and badges of people belonging to different uh, uh, organizations. I think I joined the uh, the American Legion when I got out and was a member of their actor for a while up in Clarkson. But I, I, I recognize the talent and the sacrifice in this room. And I, I meant it when I said it a few minutes ago. It's a privilege to be here with all of you tonight. Thank you very much. Let's hear it one more time for Al Brooks Patterson. When I met with Al Brooks, I was so moved by his words, I told him that next time I would vote for him. My record with him is good. Al Brooks Patterson, one more time. What a great surprise to have him here today. We are so honored. We are just a few minutes away from starting our formal, formal program, maybe in about five minutes. You take a sip of water, keep yourselves hydrated. I don't know mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, but I'm willing to try on certain people. God forbid. We're all going to stay healthy today and celebrate this great celebration, so stay tuned. I'll be back in just a couple minutes with you. I train with the best, a team that shares my drive and commitment. We collect intelligence guard our shores against drug smugglers, and keep our waterways safe, because our nation expects more. If you expect more, maybe you were born ready. Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. It nourishes, brings us together, and adds flavor to life. That's why it's important to wash hands, surfaces, and fresh produce. Keep raw meat, poultry, and seafood separate from ready-to-eat foods like fruits and vegetables. And cook to proper temperatures using a food thermometer. Enjoy! and refrigerate leftovers within two hours. For more tips on safely preparing foods, visit homefoodsafety.com. Imagine the action and see nearly a century of Michigan aviation heritage at the Selfridge Military Air Museum. Enjoy a walk around the air park and bring your cameras for a most authentic military aviation history experience. We're open to the public April through October on weekends, Memorial Day and Independence Day from 12 noon to 4.30 p.m. Group tours for adults and kids of all ages can be arranged, so call us today at 586-239-6768 or 586-239-5035. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be a part of the board of the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial. And we have several leaders of our group that are just inspire us every day with their incredible, tireless work. One of them is our first speaker today, and she is the hardest working woman I know, although my wife is here today, so second the hardest working woman I know, just to cover myself. But her heart and soul is part of this, and she works on it 24-7. So if you could give a warm welcome to the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial President, who will talk to you about what we want to have in this place today 
that we are going to build here. Give a warm welcome to our president, Debbie Howard. Thank you. sure if they're all right here, but we have Russell Levine right here as our Vice President. We have Bev Kimbrough somewhere, she is our treasurer. We have Nate Strong, our Marketing Director. We have Pam Robbins, we have Kathy Zimmerman, we have Al Muscovitz, we have Mike Cameron, we have Mary Ellen Soma. I think I got them all, right? <laughs> For the last nine years, these folks have dedicated a good portion of their lives to honoring our World War II heroes. They're an amazing team, and I'm very proud to work with them. I also want to take a moment now to honor all of our World War II veterans and any Rosies and home front workers that have come out today. Could I ask you all to stand and be recognized? today to also stand and be recognized. Thank you all so very much. We can't thank you enough for your service to our country. You may be seated. When I was 15 years old, my mom and dad took my sisters and I on a family vacation to Europe. My dad said one of our stops was absolutely going to be the beaches of Normandy and another stop was going to be Dachau concentration camp. They were a must-see for my dad on that trip. I wonder how many families today, or any of you here today, would take your kids to those camp, those beaches and that camp for a family vacation. The impact that that trip had on me is hard to explain. I've heard so many people say, I can't go there, it's so hard, it's too hard, it's so sad. You know what, I understand that, because it is. You should go anyways. This is their legacy. It is one of sacrifice and victory, all rolled into one, and you need to see it. Our goal with the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial is to bring that legacy home so that you can see it right here also. We began as Honor Flight Michigan back in 2007 with the intention of taking World War II veterans to Washington, D.C. so they could see their long-awaited national memorial. We came to the conclusion that after four years of taking Michigan to the memorial, it was time to bring the memorial to Michigan. So we embarked on the planning for the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial. We worked with state legislators for about 10 months and eventually saw Senate Resolution 13 and House Resolution 20 pass officially recognizing this memorial as the state's tribute to its contributions during World War II. We gathered our architect, Michael Gordon, of Mosif Gordon Architects. We gathered our sculptors, Larry Halbert and Tad McKillop of Ann Arbor, and our general contractor, Michael Hall, of Gordon B. Hall & Sons in Novi. Most of our board members and partners have family that was in the war. It's a very personal project for all of us. What has been designed is nothing short of spectacular. There's a large rendering right over there that I encourage you to go look at later. We have an information booth over there. You can see all the details. The memorial will be a 50-50 tribute to the men and women who fought on the home front from Michigan and to the men, women, and children who stayed on the home front helping the arsenal of democracy to keep ticking. The contributions of Michigan were unparalleled. Our, our industrial might set the precedent for, for efficiency and productivity. We had over 600,000 residents who served in the armed forces and countless others who worked on the home front. Here, we will pay tribute to them all. We will honor their sacrifice and celebrate the freedoms that we have now because of them. The memorial will tell the who, what, and where of the Michigan story. The who will be depicted by a series of life-size bronze statues that will represent forces on land, 
in the air, and on the sea. Each will be depicted through a Michigan theme. For example, the air scene will have Rosie the Riveter working on the skin of a B-24 bomber, likely at the Willow Run plant. The war half will show a crew member suiting up for a mission in that plane that Rosie helped build. The war half will also have a Tuskegee Airman who trained at Selfridge Air Force Base and who will else escort that bomber on its mission. The what will be depicted by a series of pillars that will be over along that line of trees that will represent service, sacrifice, labor, industry, commitment, and change. These pillars will speak to Michigan's contributions and how we, as a state, were critical to the ultimate victory. The where will be depicted by a granite map of Michigan that will be about 30 feet by 40 feet, made of granite, in the ground, and it will have points of military, industrial, and social interest etched into it, so you will be able to take a walking tour of the state and see where our contributions came from. The entrance wall of the memorial, which will be right over here, is going to be the wall of stars. It's gold stars that will represent all the lives lost from Michigan. We wanted this memorial to be a place to honor sacrifice and celebrate freedom. We didn't want it to be a marble garden, a place where you would only come once, pay your respects, and not want to come back. We want it to be part of the fabric of the community and of this park. The center area, the grassy area where you all are right now, will be used as a picnic space in the summer. It, it will be used for events and concerts. In the winter, this whole area here will be an ice rink so you can come and enjoy and interact. We want future generations to learn about the World War II generation and our state's role in the war. We look forward to that day. Until then, we will continue in our goal, and we will have events like this to celebrate the ultimate victory. Thank you for coming, and thank you for honoring our Michigan heroes. Debbie Howes, our president, ladies and gentlemen. Fabulous. Next up is uh, the man who's a heartbeat away from the presidency of the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial, our vice president. Ladies and gentlemen, Russell Levine is going to be talking about why we're here today, the meaning of the 70th anniversary of VE Day. Russell Levine, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Al. VE Day means Victory in Europe Day the day World War II ended in Europe. To understand the end of the war, however, one has to understand its beginning. History books and Wikipedia tell us that World War II started on September 1st, 1939, when the Wehrmacht, the German army, stormed into Poland. However, the terror that ended 70 years ago today started years before. On January 30th, 1933, after 15 years of political maneuvering, lies, and thuggery, Adolf Hitler was appointed the Chancellor of Germany, planting the seeds of the cancer vine that was to consume the entire continent. It first took root within the blood and Boden, the blood and soil of Germany's borders. Books considered un-German were set ablaze in a nationwide burning of frenzy. Following the perverted science of eugenics, physicians registered all cases of hereditary illness. Then the Nazi party eliminated any vestiges of opposition in a series of political assassinations known as the Night of the Long Knives. Finally, on September 15, 1935, the Nuremberg Laws stripped Jews of their rights as, as German citizens, starting the legal process, because of course it had to be legal, that eventually stripped Jews of their rights as human beings. Having consumed Germany, the Nazi cancer became a plague, erupting over the German frontier. On March 12, 1938, Hitler annexed Austria in a move called the Anschluss, or Unification, in direct violation of the Treaty of Versailles that ended World War I. The world watched with casual indifference. On September 30, 1938, British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain famously signed the Munich Agreement and declared peace for our time in a pathetically misguided attempt to appease Hitler by willingly conceding the German-speaking portion of Czechoslovakia known as the Sudetenland to German control. Feckless world leaders believed 
that this would t contain Hitler's territorial aggression and bloodlust. But his was an insatiable appetite. Almost immediately, the Nazis went on the Kristallnacht, or Kristallnacht, rampage, a state-sponsored race riot, also called the Night of Broken Glass, which devastated what remained of pre-war Jewish institutions. And then just six months later, Germany simply bullied its way into what was left of Czechoslovakia after the debacle of the Sudetenland, laying bare the fantasy of security the Munich Agreement supposedly ensured. Still, this was not enough. Germany insisted it required Lebensraum, or living space, it therefore was entitled to the land and resources of its racially inferior neighbors. So on September 1st, 1939, the now emboldened Fuhrer launched a supplies Blitz, Blitzkrieg, or lightning war, that sent Poland reeling. A cunning secret pact for the Soviet Union who simultaneously attacked doomed Poland. This time, however, in anticipation, European powers, having finally learned their lesson, had treaties in place to respond and engage. And so the war officially begun. Soon, the Nazi shadow fell over Scandinavia and the Low Countries. When France fell on June 22nd, 1940, Brit Britain stood alone in Western Europe, the sole impediment to Hitler's deranged messianic prophecy of a thousand-year reign. The British braced themselves for their duties in the face of the Blitz, a brutal air campaign against civilians by the Luftwaffe, or the German Air Force. They, they defended their island, believing that if they could stand up to Germany, all of Europe could be free. It was indeed their finest hour. But Europe could not yet be free. That deliverance required resources beyond the reach of the old world. The arsenal that would bear those resources was unleashed when, on December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan, catapulting a previously neutral and reluctant United States into the war. While Hitler, Mussolini, and Stalin divided up the remainder of Europe, Britain was transformed into the staging area for the greatest amphibian, amphibious invasion in history. On June 6, 1944, D-Day. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force embarked upon their great crusade to bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over Europe, and, and over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and the security of a free world. Their task was not an easy one. The enemy was well-trained, well-equipped, and fought savagely. After nearly four months of combat in hedgerows, farm lands, and towns, aided by men like our next speaker, Henri Nussbaum, Paris was liberated on October 25, 1944. Things got a little easier. There was even talk of being home by Christmas. Then, on September 16, 1944, Germany mounted a counteroffensive, a kind of a death rattle, that resulted in what came to be known as the Battle of the Bulge. In the Ardan Forest, during the coldest winter in over 100 years, Henry Malick, who's here with us today, smeared Vaseline on his face to keep it from freezing. Slowly, inch by inch, the Allies reclaimed all the territory Germany had overrun. Final push began March 15, 1945. The 63rd Infantry Division smashed the Siegfried Line, the god of the Rhine, Germany's supposedly impenetrable western wall. Now it was only a matter of time before the Allies slogged their way to Berlin. Before it was all over, on April 28, 1945, as he battled his way to Fortress Garden and Hitler's Eagle's Nest retreat, Don Burgett of Holland, Michigan, encountered the barbed wire of the Landsberg concentration camp. There, he bore witness to the pure, naked evil of the final solution and seemed so unimaginable that words simply do not exist to describe the depth of their depravity. To call the actions of the Third Reich extermination, genocide, or annihilation are far too genteel. In the end, the blood of 11 million stained the hands of Nazi Germany. Poles, disabled, homosexuals, communists, gypsies, other undesirables, and six million Jews. One of those six million was a young girl from Frankfurt, Germany, who would not live to see her 16th birthday. Anne Frank hid with a small group of family and friends in a secret annex behind a building in the western 
headquarters of Amsterdam. On August 4th, 1944, they were betrayed and captured. They were then herded onto the very last of the trains that sucked Holland's Jews into the blackness of the Nazi death machine. Just a few days earlier, on July 16th, only weeks after the promise of D-Day, behind dusty curtains, fearful of even stealing a glance at the moon lest she be spotted behind dirt cake windows, and all too aware of the loss of her carefree, contemplated years, she wrote the following. But I'm going to ask another young girl, Jessie Handelsman, who's behind me, who recently celebrated her 16th birthday, to read. In spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. I simply can't build up my hopes on a foundation consisting of confusion, misery, and death. I see the world gradually being turned into a wilderness. I hear the ever-approaching thunder, which will destroy us too. I can feel the sufferings of millions, and yet, if I look up into the heavens, I think that it will all come right, that this cruelty too will end, and that peace and tranquility will return again. She was right. Peace and tranquility returned. May 8th, 1945, VE Day, 70 years ago today. Fantastic, Russell. Thank you, Jessica. Absolutely moving and stirring. Well, this next speaker is, I am, you're going to be mesmerized by. And it's, a, it's just fascinating and fantastic to have him here today. Henri Nussbaum, a member of the French forces of the interior part of the French resistance. Henri was there. He was an eyewitness of the E-Day as it happened. He represents the free people of Europe, and that is what VE Day is. Ladies and gentlemen, what a privilege and honor to be in the same location and to share the same stage with Henri Nussbaum. was many moons ago and uh, I will try for you to remember quite some uh, very sad memory. Uh, first on the uh, front of Normandy we had five beaches and we lost a hundred and fifty five thousand men. But after three months we really made as many prisoners. I was asked by our president, Debbie Hollis, to really bring back some of the memory that I had during the French resistance. I uh, was uh, asked by uh, my family, we had many officers among them and after speaking with them, I decide that I will become an officer. So I joined the cadet school in Montpellier, cadet school for officers, and we really have a very strenuous, very arduous kind of training. And uh, suddenly, one of our sergeants came during the night and said, you have to go home. Well, at that time we thought it was part of the training. And we look at each other, ready to pack. And then he added, and go home. 
So we went home. And I had a friend who was in the French Resistance, and who said, Henry, what are you doing now? And I said, well, I've not become an officer, but uh, if you are in the French Resistance, I'm going with you. So we were giving some clothes. All the French Resistance was dressed in black. We had black pants, black shoes, black shirt, or sweater. So when we were at night, dynamiting all the trains, we, the German, we were concealed from the German, and we could really destroy the trains we were bringing all the ammunition and the arms and everything to the German army. And after that, we were sent to the Chateau, Chateauroux Forest, who was in the banlieue of Paris. And there was a dam who was furnishing all the electricity to Paris and many other cities around. And we were to really protect the dam from a Panzer division who was located across the river in the Chateau, Chateau Forest. Since I have been in the cadet school, they asked me to train some of our resistance how to use the machine and the, the bazooka. With our bazooka, we really stopped many tanks who were crossing the bridge of the dam. And uh, at that time, we were ready for more. During the night, we were really awakened by a very loud noise. And looking up in the sky, we saw many American planes coming down, so many parachutists. As soon as they were on the ground, we hugged them. We hugged them. They gave us irrigation, they gave us cigarettes and shrimp gum. Shrimp gum. We never saw shrimp gum. And I looked at the computer and it was made here in the United States in 1931. <laughs> so with them, we went and delivered Paris. The general, who was in charge of 17,000 Germans in Paris, was uh, General Dietrich von Polish. And uh, he was really an art lover, architect, architect lover. And he disobeyed the order of Hitler three times to destroy Paris, to destroy the Eiffel Tower, the Museum of the Louvre and many other beautiful buildings we have up there. After the war, we brought him back in 1946 to the capital and we gave him a wonderful welcome. What the problem that uh, Adolf Hitler had, he did the same mistake that uh, the Kaiser, the Kaiser during the First World made, he was fighting on two fronts. And Russia didn't have the arms and the ammunition to fight the German during the summer. But they really had a number of soldiers, thousands and thousands, thousands of soldiers. And uh, the problem was for the German 
Hitler thought he will win the war during the summer. The winter came. They went with the summer clothes. They were freezing. The Russians were burning everything. They didn't have no roof. They didn't have no food. And uh, so uh, they, they really lost the war right there. We made many prisoners. And then with the Americans that we really appreciate the help they gave us. We made many prisoners going. And uh, in 1944, we really celebrate. We had a wonderful parade. And the young women were breaking our ranks, giving us hugs, uh, hugs and uh, chocolate, candies, anything, and we had to run back to take our place in our hand. And uh, so I, I really fought, and uh, you will join me with that, because you know that we wouldn't have win the war if it had been for Detroit, for the arsenal in Detroit that we had, we were building everything, the planes and everything so fast. We and we do we have to really think Rosie the Riveter too. And we really said thank you. like if I may sing for you the French anthem called the Marseillaise. Allons enfants de la patrie, le jour de gloire est arrivé contre nous de la tyrannie, l'étendard sanglant élevé, l'étendard sanglant élevé. Entendez-vous dans nos campagnes mugir ces frérots, ces soldats qui viennent jusque dans nos bras égorger nos fils et nos compagnes. Aux armes citoyens, formez vos bataillons, marchons, marchons. Qu'un sang impur abreuve nos cilions. God bless you. God bless you. There are those who dedicate themselves to a sense of honor, to a life of courage, and a commitment to something greater than themselves. They have always defended this nation and each other. still do. The few, the proud, the Marines. And imagine the action and see nearly a century of Michigan aviation heritage at the Selfridge Military Air Museum. Enjoy a walk around the air park and bring your cameras for a most authentic military aviation history experience. We're open to the public April through October on weekends, Memorial Day and Independence Day from 12 noon to 4.30 p.m. Group tours for adults and kids of all ages can be arranged, so call us today at 586-239-6768 or 586-239-5035.
On Memorial Day, we take this time to remember those who've made the ultimate sacrifice for this great nation. Memorial Day is not about me. It's about those that have lost their lives in the service and defense of this great nation. It's important that Americans know the meaning of Memorial Day. That it is not just a day of going out and having a picnic. Memorial Day is one day to honor those that are no longer with us. Memorial Day is a day of tremendous grief and overwhelming pride. It becomes more personal when you lose a family member. It is our right and our duty and our honor to remember them. A day of honoring those that are gone. Who have paid the ultimate sacrifice and price for our freedoms. I think of Memorial Day as more of a day of remembering and honoring. Freedom is not free. The freedoms and liberties we enjoy every day as Americans is a direct result of the sacrifices and courage of these service men and women who died defending this great nation. It is important we all remember their lives, their courage, their legacy, and their service. Our 60 foot by 30 foot flag, ladies and gentlemen. Move your caps, if you will, please. Harold Lanning, veteran, singing our national anthem. but we know we are airborne, so it gives me an opportunity to once again to thank some people while we are on standby for the flight. Home Depot's Team Depot, Kim Jones, thank you very much. Boy Scout Troop 1629 and Club Scout Troop 1604 and 1607. The tribute from our Rosie Riveters. The tribute Rosies of Willow Run, hopefully you can hear me, were founded in order to raise awareness about the Save the Bomber Plant campaign. How many of you folks here tonight had a family member who was a woman or a man who worked on the home front here in the Arsenal of Democracy? Men at the Bomber Plant too. There are so many of us here, and so that's what we're trying to raise awareness about, just like this Memorial Legacy Project. So we're here tonight. Come take a picture with us. Donate if you can to this great project, and I'll see you around. Thank you very much. Wait, wait, Rosie wants a picture and they want a picture. Let's hear it from Rosie. Let's hear it for the Yankee lady! 
because it lost somebody's luggage. It is great to see them come back.